everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Words of Heart podcast. I'm your host, Dion Sanchez, and joining me today is Chris Templeton. Hope I said that right. Thank you for joining me today, Hello. Chris. You said it. You said it just right. Oh, <laughs> it's it my pleasure. Super pleased to be here. Uh, Chris, you kind of froze as I was introducing you. So if you could like say that again. Hi, uh, pl really pleased to be here, Dion. Thank you. Awesome. Of course, it would <laughs> freeze as you just described it. But anyhow, I'll roll with the punches. Um, so, Chris, if you could um, tell my audience a bit about yourself and your really interesting model that you are going to share with us this evening, that would be great. Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, so in 2003, I had a woman who called herself my evil stepmother, um, jokingly, and who I love and adore to this day. And she recommended I read a book called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And he's a spiritual guy, you may have heard of, of him, but a very, very interesting book. And one of the things that he said that just really blew my mind, he's like, uh, you know, we are really good at driving ourselves insane. I was like, what? No, that's, that's everybody out there. That's not me. And so, I, but you, know, you keep reading, you're like, oh my God, that is me. That is, that is the things that, that go on in my head about, you know, who I am and how I view the world. And he framed it as stories. And so if w what I developed as a result of that was three questions. What's the story I'm telling? Is it serving me in this moment? And um, is there a more authentic story I can tell? And so <clears throat> what I'm trying to do at this point is, is really take this to anybody who feels it's a fit for them. There are gonna be people who hear this and say, oh my God, that is the biggest bunch of garbage I've ever heard. And that's totally fine. And I'll, I can explain kind of where those people are for the most part. Uh, but what this ended up being was a universal model about how we perceive ourselves in the world around us. And what's been fascinating, I started this work in 2003 when I read uh, The Power of Now and uh, went through a pretty dramatic shift uh, in the model and took it kind of the next level with uh, a TED talk by a woman by the name of Joe Bolte Taylor who uh, was a brain is a brain scientist and in her early 30s had a stroke that shut down uh, the left side of hemisphere of her brain. And so um, what sh was really fascinating about that was that in her recognition of what was happening and because she was a brain scientist and understood what was going on, it became very clear that her left side brain had shut down and that as a result, she was in this incredible place of peace. She knew what was happening. She knew she was having a stroke. She was at peace. She felt like she was outside of her body. She felt like there was no way that her body, that her consciousness could fit in her body because she was kind of out of had an out of, out of body experience and so i think what her primary recognition was is oh my god there's this place where we are so much more than we have any understanding for the most part in our day-to-day -day lives and and so basically what I did is I took, you know, these three questions and that piece and I created a model that allows me to understand my own behavior, number one, self-awareness, you know, there's no change if I don't know there's a problem. And so self-awareness is super, super, super huge. But then it allows me to, it's like putting on not rose colored glasses. It's like putting on a pair of corrective lenses and going, oh, 
I'm starting to make so much sense out of what's going on in my relationships, at work, with my kids, um, you know, politically, it, uh, culturally. It's so easy now to look at this and then go as a result, oh, because I understand what I'm seeing in a new light, I'm far less judgmental. I don't tend to be as fearful as I used to be, that sort of thing. So that's the overview of kind of how this has developed over the last 18 years. Um, and I'm super pleased to be able to kind of walk you through it and, and, uh, and share the model with you. So does that make sense? <laughs> yes, it certainly does. Um, do you find people utilizing your particular model um, more so than ever considering the pandemic right now and many people had a chance to stop and think and reflect um, really because they had no choice in the matter? No. Uh, I, I, and the only reason I say that is is just because I have not been sharing it. I'm just really starting to share oh, it now. Right, right, right. But the yes answer is, and one of the things that shocked me about this is that when I told people, started telling people about this probably in, I don't know, 2008, 2010, people go, I mean, it's stuck with them. I've got a my closest friend who said, who says all the time, you know, oh, the story my dad's telling, or, you know, oh, the stories we're telling. And so, and or I had a guy that used to work for, with me and we went separate ways, not on bad terms, but we definitely weren't good workmates. And he wrote me an email five or six years later and said, the stories we tell, I haven't got it all figured out, Chris, but I'm really on the way. And so the thing that's fascinated me about it, and I think one of the things that's really put fire in me to keep going with this is how many people just resonate with it. I promise at the end of this, you're going to go, oh, this makes so much sense. So, so not in regards to COVID, but in general, yes. And it's been lovely in terms of I'm, my, my, the strength of my relationship with my kids and with our friends um, would not be possible without this basic understanding and this kind of, like I said, set of corrective lenses for life. And it's no, it's not a belief system. It's not therapy. All of those things can be measured in this system, uh, but that's not what this is. I'm not a therapist. I don't have any kind of credentials that way. This is all about common sense. Right. So um, do you think we can um, dive into your model with sure. perhaps the topic of relationships in this case? Sure. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, wait, no, no, this doesn't. Yes, I'd be more than happy to do that. So let me pull up my little screen here uh, and share. Where am I sharing? It should work. <laughs> I think. No, it does. I just need to find out what I'm supposed to be sharing. I want to share. Oh, there it is. Okay. So you should see now something that says, oh, the stories we tell, my little logo. Yes. Can you see that? Okay. Yep. So um, just a, a, a one other thing that, that is pretty important to me is there's a guy by the name of Viktor Frankl, and he was a Holocaust survivor, and he was one of the people who in these camps was able to find a way not to buy into the misery in which he was being subjected to. He found a way to see the bigger picture in life. And so one, and then he became a psychiatrist and uh, so my favorite quote on the face of the planet is between stimulus and response, there's a space. And in that space is our power to choose our response. And in our response lies our growth and our freedom. And so what this, the reason this is so important to me is, and why I want to start by sharing this, is that I believe everybody has the capability to 
create that space between stimulus, something that annoys me or something that's awful or, you know, whatever the case may be, and how I respond to it. And so this just, when you think about it, if I, when I live by default, there's no space between stimulus and response. Like I, you said something that made me angry and I'm going to respond with anger with me. But when I start to create space, I can say, gee, what's going on with you? Why are you so angry? And not have that ability to and, and let go of that default living. And that's a really big piece of this is kind of letting go of that. And it's where we grow. It's how we find our freedom to be who we want versus kind of living by whatever next situation comes up. And think about all the people that you hear who they'll say something, like, oh my God, I'm so upset because blah, blah, blah. And that's where it stops, right? They're like, and so emotion kind of ends up being this fact of life that dictates to me how I feel in the moment. I, I saw them do that and it made me mad and now bah. Well, that is not that's not the road to growth, and it certainly isn't the road to freedom. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, it okay. is important to grow and to evolve and not be confined to that particular space. Right. Not be stuck, right? And yeah. so um, so here's what I want everybody to do. I'm going to ask you to think of three things. The first thing is think of something that you just always struggle with. Some, and you don't need to tell me what it is, Dion, just, and, but audience, think about one thing that you have always struggled with, okay? Then think about another thing that you just, things just go right. Like for me, uh, my relationship with my wife, like it just goes right. It just, it doesn't require, it, it's not that it doesn't require effort, but the effort that gets put into it doesn't feel like, I'm pushing against something. It just feels like the right thing to do. Um, so that's the second story, kind of something that's right in your life. And then think of a time um, when everything was just right with the world, like a, a time where you just were like, there is nothing that can bother me now. In this moment, there's nothing that can bother me now. And what, what I want you to do is, is think of those three stories, something you struggle with, something where things just seem to go right. And then the third one being, oh my God, everything's right. It's like we were talking about when I mentioned Joe Bolte Taylor, the woman's having a stroke, left brain shuts down, and she's she calls it her deep inner peace circuitry is running. You're like, oh my God, how is that even possible? So those are the three stories I want you to think about. And now I will um, give you the three questions. Do you have a question? Um, not at the moment. Okay. All right. So question number one, what's the story I'm telling? Like super simple. And this is about anything it's about it's not what am i thinking because thinkings are thinking is like fact like what's the story i'm telling and the reason we call it story is because what we want to do is we want you to inherently know <laughs> that your thinking can be changed and story automatically implies that it can be edited that it can be changed that sort of thing so whether it's what I'm thinking about myself, and God knows we're good at beating ourselves up, aren't we? Yeah. We're good at torturing ourselves. What's the story I'm telling either, it's always in here, but it's either about myself or something that's going on in the world. Um, my wife really has struggles with some people at work, and that will, you know, that, that kind of thing, the stories that she tell don't really help her. So the second question is, um, does what I'm, the story I'm telling in this moment serve me? Does it serve me in this moment? So think about well. some something that we've struggled with for a long time. We may have created a story to protect us from whatever it was. It could have been parents berating us, could have been uh, you know, whatever the case may be, but we had a story that allowed us to deal with this and move forward. You think about people who have had all these struggles in life and, excuse me, 
And when they actually had these issues start, they created stories to help them negotiate it and get through it. The problem is, is as adults, we carry those stories and they don't tend to serve us in the moment. So I think of uh, there's a, an organization that serves uh, foster youth in town. And those kids develop some really, really tough behaviors to negotiate a, a really rough upbringing. But when they take those same kinds of stories to similar situations, they don't serve them because, you know, getting mad and getting angry and swearing and that sort of thing at your coworker or your boss certainly doesn't work like it needed to work and did work when I was with my parents. I'm not going to, whatever the, am I making sense? Yes, you absolutely are. And it certainly got me thinking about um, different stories of my lifetime and has it actually served me in that precise moment? Um, you did your own research on me about my story with diabetes, which um, I do feel that story plays a significant factor because that inevitably led to me launching this podcast to begin with and sharing yep. other people's stories who yep. feel their stories need to be shared in that moment and to help others from that point forward. So, so those are the kinds of things that, you know, just with those two questions, like think about the change in self-awareness that you have when you can go, oh my God, is what the story that I used to tell in order to deal with these issues, is it working for me? Oh my God, it's not. And so then the third question is, is there a more authentic story I can tell? Like, is there a story that I can tell, sorry, that's going to serve me more authentically in this moment? Make sense? Um, it does, but your screen is just... Did it just go away? It just went away on my end. So okay, hold I don't on. Let me see if I can figure out what's going on. the of said... And can you see it now? I just see a line. <laughs> I don't... Okay. okay, hold on. Yes, on. I, I see it now. I see Okay. the Great. infamous third right. question that we are discussing. <laughs> So with these three questions, remember we talked about when we live by default, we don't have a tendency to have space between the stimulus and how we respond. Yes. You said something that annoyed me. Here's my response. And let me tell you, it's probably not a good one. Right. So when I recognize that, when I just ask the question, what's the story I'm telling? I'm creating a little space. And when I say, does it serve me in the moment? I'm creating more space. And when I say, is there a more authentic story I can tell, I create even more space. And now um, I, have, I have the beginnings, not complete, but the beginnings of agency in whatever that situation is. And so agency being the ability to have control over my life and make changes in it. Uh, it's, a, it's a new term for me, but it's, it seems to be the best one that right. fits. So those are the three questions. Make sense? Any questions so um, far? No questions so far. I definitely love the third one. Is there more authenticity story I can tell? It definitely has my brain um, thinking because there's many parts of me that I have yet to share and perhaps I need to reevaluate and examine that and perhaps see if it does serve a purpose and what is the story entail. Um, and this is the thing I, I just say one, one of the things that I think is so crucial in terms of, you know, we've got, I, I'll share some ideas of things that you can do that I think are important to do. One of them, probably the most important one after kind of internalizing the three questions in the model that I'll show you in a second is look at your life as practice. Okay. What? You know how a, a doctor, they say a doctor's practice or a, lawyer, a, a legal practice the idea is simply that we're learning all the time. And what if I 
say, you know what, I'm going to look at my life as practice. What it does is it helps me take some of those crappy stories from the past and say, okay, what can I learn from them? It creates everything I'm trying to do is create space between stimulus and response, right? right? I want to be able to have my kid go off and say, you know, I'm just so mad, blah, 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 and let them get that out and then and then wait for it and think about, okay, what, how do I want it? What's the most authentic way I can help my boy to get through a tough time? And, and so looking at your life as practice is one of, the, to me, one of the most important things you can do. Shall I move on? <laughs> sure. I'm not having any, I'm not having any fun doing this, but I, you know, we'll see what we got. Okay. So <laughs> here's where the model comes in. Okay. All right. If you think about it, <clears throat> question number two is binary. It's yes or no. It's not. It is not. How are you feeling? Like, I do not care at this point in time when I'm trying to figure out what the story is I'm, I'm telling myself and whether it's serving me in the moment and what, how I feel. Irrelevant. Okay? We'll deal with feelings later, I promise. But right in the moment, it's a binary question, a yes or a no. And so what happens is I can say if the story serves me, I create a line. If it's above the line, it means the story does not serve me. Okay. And if it's below the line, the story does serve me. So uh, let's see if I can do this real quick. So up here, I'm having thoughts and and thinking things. And, and by the way, a story can be my thoughts and words, or it can be my thoughts and pictures. I look at a car, a really nice car, and I go, oh, God, I'm never going to have one of those. That's a story that doesn't serve us. Versus down here, my thoughts do serve me. God, that's a beautiful car. That would be so fun to drive. It would be even more fun to own. Like, can you feel the difference between... Yeah this story up here and this story down here. So again, what becomes really important is recognizing, I just need to know one thing. Is it serving me in this moment? I don't care if it served me in the past. I don't care if it seems like it'll serve me in the future right now, right now. Because then we get to kind of let go of all the baggage of the past and all the fears that we're having in the future. And that's another thing that's really interesting about here. Up here, is all fear-based at underlying every yeah. thought that doesn't serve me is fear-based down here is allowing and the other one that i think is really i looked this up you know what one of the um uh what the opposite of fear is yeah. <laughs> Isn't that wacky? Think about it. Like when I'm fearful, all I want to do is make that fear go away. When I'm telling a story that serves me in the moment, I'm way more open. I'm allowing to what's going on. I'm curious about, you know, like because I have more space between stimulus and the response, I have the ability to ask questions. Gee, what's going on? How are, how, why is this person behaving the way they are? Why am I behaving the way I am with myself? Why am I tearing myself down? When I'm here, I, when I come down here, I can be curious about that thing, whatever that story is, and I can create more space. Does that... Uh... Christian, we were breaking up, but I got the last part, creating more space. I got the last part before my computer decided to. Does that make sense? Here. What you? Yes. Um, okay. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. But it's, the, the quality is crap right now? Well, no, it, it's fine. It's fine now. <laughs> I'm just. Okay curious as to what what else we can discuss in regards to your model um okay all right so let me let's just keep going i've got a recording on this end and i can grab good sound from this end and i'll if we need to edit this i'm more than happy to do it okay oh, so okay. that it sounds good on both ends awesome. um okay so 
So the rest of the model goes something like this. Uh, oops, not that. Nope, not that. Okay, sorry. Is fear getting in the way? Nope, not yet. Not yet. It probably should be, but it's not. Okay, so let's see if this works. Okay, so when I am above the line, right. I like to call that being in little me mode. Like, think about it. If I'm fear-based and I'm cranky and I feel like a victim, all of that stuff is happening above the above the line. And so I call that little me mode. Lesser me or little me. But the thing that fascinates me about it, if we call it little me, most everybody, when they see that smiles, they're like, oh, I've got a little me. <laughs> so that's why we call it little me. And then... Um, are you not cooperating? I'm trying to clear the pen and it. Sorry. Let's try it this way. Little me is interfering. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not for me, it's not. It may be for you, but like I'm not because because I'm not going, oh my god, this is the worst thing that could ever happen. You know, we'll, we'll figure it out. Last time I didn't have this issue, and this time I do. So let's just try one thing, and let's go back to the slideshow. And let's go to right. Oh, we're well, right at the right place. Okay, so little me is the first. Right. Is the name for all the thinking I have above the line. Authentic me is for the thinking that I have below the line. Like and that. then the other, say again? I like the authentic me part. <laughs> Good. That's the goal, right? Like this is, look, this is supposed to be something that's makes me feel good and makes not feel, it's not positive thinking, but it's about looking at myself from a different perspective. And an authentic perspective, we can talk about all kinds. Now, there's another line, and I just want to point it out, and, and a, a third me, and that is what I call enlightened me. Now, for a lot of people, enlightenment means, oh, one day I'm going to wear the right clothes, I'm going to meditate regularly, and I will be enlightened for the rest of my life. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Okay. What happens is, and if you think about the three stories, here's here's some place that uh, up top in Little Me Land that I struggle with, in Authentic Me Land, it's um, for me my my relationship with my wife and my kids. Like I just get to be me, and Enlightened Me is all kinds of little things. It could be me and my wife holding hands and just kind of going into that place where nothing else matters. This is awesome. Perfect example of enlightened me uh, 20 years ago, driving down uh, a, a freeway with a rag top rental, rag top down, playing REM. Like life just. And so what's so funny about that is people don't recognize that they're going in and out of this area all the time. Not all the time. But one of the things that I want people to understand is like, hey, guess what? You get to be there on a regular basis. And, and so anyway, those are the three me's. So for the most part, we're, you know, somewhere between bouncing back and forth between little me and, and authentic me, depending on the situation. So a lot of people have a tendency to say, you know, I'm so depressed. Well, that's not really an accurate way to language that. There are times I'm really depressed and there are other, other times that I'm not. And so recognizing, you know, that the story I'm telling is serving me when I'm in authentic me mode, I'm more likely to say, gee, I'm depressed a lot, but not all the time. And there, these are the things where I'm not depressed or that don't trigger me or whatever the case may be. So that's the three me's. And then... <clears throat> what now we talk about emotion and so on the right side of the model what we say is here is positive emotion and on the left side is negative emotion 
And so what you get is basically a funnel uh, or a V. And what the issue is, are you familiar with, um, they used to call it bipolar disorder? Yes. Where people are either really manic, like I can do anything, or they're super, super depressed. Yes. So up here, you have a much greater range of emotion. As you come south below the, the line, there's still negative emotion and there's still positive emotion, but uh, it's just not as strong. There's no need for it to be as strong. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so what happens is that, on, so it kind of looks like this. On the left side is the negative emotion on the right side is a positive and then somewhere in the middle is, is neutral. And then at the bottom of the model um, is what in, in enlightened beam mode, this is, uh, you know, in Christianity, the, they say this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. <laughs> yeah. Whether they recognize it or not, that's what they're referring to is we have this, this, deep inner peace circuitry as Jill Bolte Taylor called it and outside of the model or below where I am is and I don't care what you call it you can call it God you can call it spirit you can call it um, the universe you can call it infinite intelligence it doesn't matter but what Jill Bolte Taylor was talking about when she was talking about being unable to conceive of fitting her consciousness back into her body. She was basically in touch with whatever you choose to call that. Making sense? Yes. And I'm actually glad you use like a triangle, like pyramid as um, your um, concept, because I feel many people use that particular shape for many different reasons when it comes to emotions and evaluating and finding the truth when in within oneself so i'm glad you use the triangle so i can understand the whole um symmetry and the perspective a lot more um as you. You and, and one of the things that's interesting about it is it is uh, it is intentionally not flipped it's not a pyramid because that kicks in some little me thinking of oh i've got to climb the pyramid right and really w what happens is in reality is another great way to look at what's going on up here is that this is all of my baggage and if i say oh all my baggage <laughs> is up there if i can start moving it down here I become self-actual. I'm more likely to become self-actualized. I'm more likely to have more meaning in my life, that sort of thing. So, um, and we can talk about that a little later, but basically this is, you know, what people are trying to get rid of. And I don't want people to get rid of their baggage. I want people okay. to come to peace with their baggage and to stop pushing against their baggage and recognize that when they do that, when I have that space between stimulus and response, I get to work with that and mold it and say, okay, I didn't want those things to happen, but I am who I am because of, in large part because of all the stuff that's happened up here. And when I open that space and figure out how to create an authentic story about those things, especially up here, man, oh man, there is some fabulous, fabulous learning. And that's ends up what becomes in large part, the basis of meaning in my life. Awesome. Like that? That is the correct response. And you have to be tell everybody that I didn't pay you to do that. <laughs> no, no, you didn't pay me to do that. <laughs> <clears throat> so just finishing up the model, and then we can talk about anything that you want, including relationships. So <clears throat> the last part of the, uh, the one thing I want people to think of is when okay. we talk about being enlightened, we're light, we're lighter. And so 
I don't know if you saw it, but you can see that kind of down here, oh, things I see. are lighter. And so on the other hand, up here, you can see that this is kind of like the dark switch. Like when I'm up in the in Little Me Land, um, the darkness really sets in. The, fur the further north I go, the more emotional I am, you can kind of see that that shadow. And a lot of times people describe it as, oh, I've got this dark cloud over me, that sort of thing. All of that is in Little Me Land. You with me? Yes. So last two things. We've talked about telling stories all the time. And so what I want you to understand is that we have, and you may be aware of it, some people say, oh my God, that's the biggest bunch of crap I've ever heard. But if they start to listen for what they're saying to themselves, they'll recognize there's this little narrator there. And on that narrator, when things go into little me land becomes the cop the protector and if you uh. tie in that this is all about fear what the protector's doing is all is narrating from a fearful place a place of victimization a place of powerlessness think about when you got your diagnosis how powerless you felt like how what am i I mean, it must have been just crazy how negative it was, right? Yeah, many people took it negatively <laughs> that I got this. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Everybody's, hey, let's go up and be in, all be in fear together. Gee, how's that serving us in this moment? Now, it's not to say that you shouldn't have been up there, and I don't want anybody to think for a single second that what I'm saying is, hey, never go up here. Uh, 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 uh. What I'm saying is understand that there are things that are going to take you up there. But if I ask these three questions and I create some space, I also have the ability to move from fear into a place of agency down here where I can say, you know what? This is really awful for me. Like dealing with this is not right now, not one little bit of fun, right? But... I'm going to do my best to tell an authentic story. I don't know how this is going to end. I am hoping I'm not going to die. And because I'm not in problem mode up here, instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to be in solution mode down here. This is not, 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 not positive thinking. Like I'm not saying, okay. oh, just run over to the positive side and everything's going to be okay because <laughs> that's actually... When we do that, we're up here above the line right. being in positive, positive thinking. So I want an authentic story. I want to live. I want to get through this. I want to do everything that I can to serve myself as we figure this out. And, oh, my God, there's a whole new wrench, which is COVID. I want to be authentic about this and do everything in my power to come through and be right where you are right now, right? Yeah. Right? In comparison to where that was, what was it, January of last year that you found this out? Well, we're in the pandemic for about two years now, so it would be two years. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm, I'm stepping to the... And look, and, and here's what's right now. <laughs> really fascinating. Do you know what you just did? You just smiled and laughed a little bit, didn't you? Yes. And, and what I want you to understand about that is I know that this is our natural state. And it's because even after feeling like you were up here in the worst place you could be with time and, and you know, getting through it and all that, for some reason, we get really light about those tough experiences. Like that experience is never going to be one that you ever, 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 ever want to go through again. But damn, did it serve you in a way that created character, that allows you to laugh at it now. Those things are so critical. And if I can preset myself to be thinking this way down here, as opposed to being stuck up here, lots of space between stimulus and response, I'm so much more likely to end up 
living and making it and, and getting to a place where I'm laughing and thinking, oh, this ain't so bad. Does that make sense? Yes, it does make sense. Um, as you were it, 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 using this, the model and what I just shared with you about my diagnosis, I love how you're able to connect that. And I totally see how my laughing just now helped um, emphasize your point. So. Yes, it did. So that I think is the model. And so you want to talk about relationships? Um, I did, but um, I don't want to, we've been at this for about almost an hour <laughs> or so. Okay. Oh um, my God, have we? Um, well, 8.30 This is now. the model. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, so no, this no, is the no, model. Guys. <laughs> and I hope that everybody in your audience goes, oh my gosh, that applies to me. And th the only thing that I want you to know is... This is practice, it takes time, there's no quick fixes, this is not about positive thinking, it's about the things that, the practices that I think are most important are writing, like you can't get it wrong. If you, get, if you said, I'm gonna write two or three times a day and whatever comes out of the pen, and handwriting is way better than typing, it just seems to slow you down and let you connect kind of down here um, what, what, when I write, this stuff seems to bubble up into my consciousness. Um, uh, so writing, sitting quietly for a few, few times a week, minimum of five minutes for me, that turned into an average of about 20 minutes and hundreds of meditations over uh, three years. So set goals low that are easy to accomplish. So you're more likely to do them. Um, and then look at any other thing that you do to try and help yourself and say to yourself, does it fit here? And if not, what if it's up here or up here, what do I need to do to change it, tweak it so that I'm in an authentic place with it? And think about how many people get stuck in affirmations. I'm abundant, oh, don't feel abundant. I'm making a million dollars, no, I'm not, right? To, right. to affirmations or goals that feel realistic for me. It's not to say you shouldn't stretch, but right. so those, that's in a nutshell, in an hour nutshell, <laughs> <laughs> the questions it, in the model. It was a wonderful nutshell. Cause again, there's no time constraints, but <laughs> I did want to get to the fun portion of this game to give you a chuckle and that is my icebreaker okay. segment so i'll start with the icebreaker question if you had to come up with and i feel like you're gonna be really good at this considering what we just discussed if you had to come up with a title or a chapter for where your life is at right now what would it be meaningfully growing meaning still have some areas that growing meaningfully growing yep still have some places i struggle like just about everybody does um but i don't find myself stuck in the things that don't serve me as much <laughs> I think that's a wonderful um, chapter slash title for your life right now. Um, <laughs> and for me, which you sort of already know because you did your research, but I'm going to say it anyway, because again, this is my podcast. My chapter or title for where my life is at right now would be a warrior for change. I've undergone a lot of experiences and you only know one small part of it because I got diagnosed with diabetes at the start of the pandemic, really. So all the bumps and bruises and all the craziness that encompasses my life have really shaped me into who I am. So I think being a warrior for change is a perfect reflection to who I am right now, and where my life is going. So Love it. I love it. Awesome. So <laughs> on to my favorite part, and that's the icebreaker game. Okay. So 
This game is called Song Association. You don't have to be an avid singer to understand this game for the record. <laughs> That's the joys of this game. It's a hoop. So basically how the game works is I give you a word okay. and you can either say it, sing it, rap it, however you want to um, say it. And it has to... The word I give you has to either have the song title or has to be in the lyrics. However, okay. <laughs> there is a catch. Um, you only have 15 seconds based off of the word Ooh. I give you to either say it involving the song title or in the lyrics. That's the thing. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> little me's kicking in like, I don't know if I can do this. Okay, I'm, I'm giving it, I'm going to give it a shot. It's going to be fun. You're going to have a chuckle and <laughs> be enlightened. I promise you. I am. I am. <laughs> so the first word is heart. Say it one more time because you cut out. Oh, uh, of course, my internet would want to peep in here. Um, uh, I, Let me start over the timer because <laughs> that, that didn't help. So the first word is heart. Um, straight from heart. What's that from? Straight from the heart, you're to blame. Oh, you give love a bad name. <laughs> bon Jovi. And also, of course, one of my heart. Uh, Chris, can you say that <laughs> one more time? My internet's not that's agreeing right. with myself. Um, you said Bon Jovi, and that's all I got before my internet acted up. Oh, and you're frozen again. <laughs> Are you still there, Chris? It, it said, uh, straight from the heart, straight from the heart, and you're to blame. You give love a bad name. <laughs> yes. I Okay. So, and you did that before the time went off, even though my internet's being wonky. <laughs> so, um, for, I'll get to the next one. Hopefully, my internet is still okay. stable. So, the <laughs> next word is words. Words? Mm-hmm. What 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 are words for when no one listens at all? What are words for? Um, can't remember who it is, but <laughs> it's a great one. What are words for when no one listens at all? That's my answer. <laughs> okay. Um, well, uh, I don't. <sighs> I don't know if I should give you that point though, because <laughs> you were. I'm sure it's a song. <laughs> Well, I'll, have to, I'll google i'll google search it later i'll give you that one <laughs> all right so the last one the last one might be difficult because many people can't come up with a song for this word and i've already changed the last word of this game like three times so okay. hopefully you have better luck than other people so the last word is change Oh, and I have to do it in a song. Change, or in the lyrics. Chain, chain, chain. That's chain of fools. No, that's chain. Chain. Don't go changing to try and please me. <laughs> oh, Don't go changing to try and please me. And uh, the first one was, uh, was Missing Persons. That was the band changing to try and please me uh, that's billy joel <laughs> <laughs> well, I, can I, cheat? <laughs> I can't give you the third one though because that was when okay. the went off. Right. so <laughs> my internet was stable enough for me to know that you missed the timer <laughs> so um dang uh, but see that was a fun game you're laughing i like I'm it laughing. i had fun it's a hoop <laughs> Unfortunately, um, we're at the end of this hoopla of fun here in this episode. So do you have any social links to share with my audience? Yeah, absolutely. Um, first of all, website, oh, the stories we tell .com. Instagram at oh, the stories we tell dot and um, Twitter, oh, the stories we tell Facebook, oh, the stories we tell, I believe. Um, and 
Uh, and, and YouTube, if you search for all oh, the stories we tell all together, um, you'll see the little logo come up. And I really recommend a playlist called The Honesty Project that uh, me and a good close friend have been doing um, uh, uh, these recordings. So go have fun with it. Please, please feel free to reach out to me. I got nothing to sell other than hopefully creating more meaning in your life um, through those those channels. Awesome, Chris. Thank you for joining me. This was an awesome conversation and I can't stop chuckling. So <laughs> mission accomplished. <Good>. So <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> to Thank you, all, Dion. I totally appreciate it. No problem. To all my listeners, um, thank you for tuning into this latest episode of the Words Apart podcast. If you enjoy this episode, if you had a chuckle, a laugh, a hoopla, a silly happy dance, feel free to share that with me either by retweeting, subscribing on the following platforms. We are on Facebook at the Words of Heart podcast. We are also on YouTube under the same name. And of course, you can hear us on any platform you listen to your podcast, Apple, Spotify, Google, however you choose to um, send in your thoughts as to how this episode has resonated with you, please do. If you could send it to the moon, please let me know because that would be awesome. Um, either way, stay healthy, stay safe. And until next time, bye.